there guys, this is Caitlin here and welcome back to Geeky Sunday, the day of the week where normally I discuss things to do with TV or anime or video games or whatever I just find interesting in the world right now. Um, the reason why I'm not in my normal backdrop right now of my bedroom is a couple of reasons is because um, I'm currently on my own right now, uh, babysitting my little puppy Alfie, who you can probably hear in the background. And when I moved to my bedroom to record this, he just would not stop barking or crying and it was just getting a little bit, you can hear him now because uh, he's been a little bit of a pest down there. So my apologies. Um, I'm going to do my best to try and keep him quiet. He's just looking over there. So hopefully I can actually just talk in this video and you'll hear him in the background a little bit and he won't be too much of a noise machine. But for this episode, I wanted to talk about um, Steven Universe, which was the summer of Steven, which started this week, which um, I, I was thinking about e either doing like... I wanted to do one video for per week because there's like five episodes in a week now, uh, back to back, and some of the episodes I I know that I'm not going to watch because it's mainly just filler stuff, or it's maybe to do with a character that I'm not too interested in, or you know I um, don't really have much to say in terms of the episodes because this week there was an episode that I'd already discussed before, which was Stephen Floats, which got leaked before, but I just decided to record anyway. Um, Mr. Greg and um, Too Short to Ride, which is probably the two I'll be talking about the most in this video. And then there was the new Lars, which I just didn't watch because I didn't. I don't really like Lars. Like, he's not... I don't hate him as a character, but he's, like, my least favourite character out of all of Steven Universe. So I just decided I wasn't really going to watch it because I don't think anything, like, mind-blowing happened. At least nothing that I've seen posted about. So I, I don't think it's, like, too big a loss if I haven't seen that one. And then I maybe, like, mentioned Beach City Drift a little bit because, you know, it was kind of interesting episode. Not as much as Mr. Greg and Too Short to Ride, but, you know, it was that way where it was still a good episode to round off the week. So starting off with Mr. Greg, and this was, like, maybe my favourite episode of the entire week, mainly because it dealt with the relationship between Greg and Pearl and how they finally, like, by the way, spoilers, by the way, if you've not seen the episode, I advise uh, watching the episodes first before you listen to this discussion um I was just like this was the episode that we really needed we really needed closure on their relationship right now because obviously they weren't friends to begin with anyway but like Garnet and Amethyst got over it like they got over their problems with Greg or whatever issues they had with Greg and they seemed to be getting along just fine Pearl was the one with the thorn in her side the entire time insisting that she just couldn't like Greg she would just simply put up with him for the fact that he was the ch he was uh, Stephen's father and that was it but other than that she's not really like been making an effort to be nice like especially nice to him or like especially like courteous to him she's always just been a bit like dismissive of him as like a person even though he's Stephen's dad but obviously she still sees him as the person that took Rose away from her which you know but the good thing about this episode is that I love it was a musical episode. I mean, they've been teasing the fact that we're going to get a musical themed episode for a while now. A lot of people were thinking it was maybe going to be Hit the Diamond, but obviously that didn't happen. So this is our musical. And out of all the songs, because I think there was at least five, if you're not counting the sort of reprises that happened. But my favourites out of the two were probably It's Over, Isn't It? and Stephen's songs, um, Both of You. They were really, really well written songs. And the music like going through it was just amazing. And obviously the, act the actors and actresses were very good at singing the songs. Like, it was amazing. And, you know, I, it was quite a nice dynamic to see in this episode of Pearl, Greg and Stephen. I really liked it and I thought it was really sweet when they just, you know, Greg and Pearl, they finally opened up to each other and just talked. Like, this is what they needed for so long. Like, they're both going through the grief of losing Rose and yet they never thought to each other, why don't we just talk about it? We both know what the other is going through, yet we were too awkward and, like, scared to discuss it or anything like that. So I thought it was really nice. It was well overdue, like, you know... I think if they'd done it like too early into the series, it probably wouldn't have had the same effect as it did now. But now that we've had like this whole like we've had at least we're now in season three, so we've had two seasons of like hinting and like kind of grasping at straws about what this relationship was between Pearl and Greg because obviously it was like a rivalry and then it got pretty bitter at least on Pearl's side. Anyway, Greg didn't really hate Pearl. He was just like you know confused as to why she was being so over clingy and that of Rose and whatnot. So like I think. It was a very good episode. I really enjoyed it. Also, it was kind of like interesting to see what Greg was going to do with all this money that he got from Marty. And it's interesting though, he didn't spend it all because in the following episodes that he, he claims that he doesn't care like if he doesn't get paid at the car wash because he's filthy rich. So clearly he didn't blow the entire load of money at the hotel in Empire City. So that's good to know that, you know, he may have like overspent a bit, but like he didn't like blow it all out because he was able to buy a tablet in the next episode, which was too short to ride. 
for uh, meant to be for himself apparently. But then he gave it to Stephen because he didn't something about he didn't trust the media or something like that. And then um, Stephen gave it to Peridot because Peridot clearly misses her lemon enhancers. And Stephen thought if I give her the tablet, it's kind of like her little touch screeny thing that she had with her fingers, which I thought was really sweet. It was awfully sweet of him to consider that she misses her technology. And maybe it's not up to scratch with homeworld technology, but at least she's got something, you know, something to work with. And, you know, now she has access to the internet, so that opens, like, a whole world of possibilities. She's got a Twitter now, apparently. She has a Twitter. And I think she's probably going to get obsessed with this YouTube, or TubeTube, I think, is what they called it. Like, that's their off-brand name for YouTube, but it was really interesting. I really liked the kind of um, dynamic, also, of, like, Amethyst, Peridot, and Steven, because they really work off each other, because, as Amethyst calls them, they're the shorty squad. And, like, we got, like, a huge, like, revelation in terms of, like, gem lore and even, like, homeworld lore in terms of, like, the background of it. So what it was revealed was that, um, Peridot is, like, a second generation Peridot. Because she calls herself, like, an Era 2 one. I think that's a set. I think that's what she called herself. Like, she said, Era 2 Peridots cannot shapeshift. And they ended up becoming very small because homeworld is lacking in resources. So it seems that newer generation gems lack the ability to shapeshift so this is mainly a thing that is like apparent in like older generation gems like ancient ones like the crystal gems and that and also it seems like maybe first generation peridots can shapeshift because they have more like they had more access to more resources but second generation peridots need the lemon enhancers which is like what she explained like they were given the lemon enhancers to try and like make up for the fact they can't shapeshift they uh, maybe this also means she can't produce a weapon from her gem this is what I'm kind of, like, Alfie is now squeaking a toy in the background and losing my train of thought. But this is the thing I think that um, our Peridot cannot produce a weapon. Like, I think that's what also that's hinting at because obviously she doesn't have shapeshift powers and she perhaps cannot produce a weapon, or, like, on her own. But we did learn, at least this Peridot, the one that we know, she has, well, um, Stephen called it magnet powers, which I'm not quite sure if that's the accurate or metal bending powers, I think, is that what he called? He called it metal power. Which, I'm not quite sure if that's quite accurate, because the tablet isn't entirely made of metal. It's, like, made of all other stuff. And plus, she was able to move the ring with her powers or whatever. So I don't think it's particularly to do with metal. I think she's got some kind of gravity bending power or whatever. Like, I'm calling it bending, because I'm thinking of Avatar now. But she's got some kind of, like, gravity manipulation, because she's able to make stuff float and bring it towards her or push it away from her. So, like, maybe that's a power unique to Peridot's. Or maybe just this Peridot. We don't know, but, um... Obviously, homeworld peridots probably don't have the chance to even explore whether they have this power or not, because they have the lemon hanser, so they're just relying on them all the time. So they probably don't even know that they even have these powers, which it would kind of make sense if they had kind of magnetism or whatever, or gravity, because, like, as Peridot said before, like, Peridotite or whatever, the gem, like, the material that Peridots are made from is, like, deep in, like, the core of planets, apparently. So that would be, like, kind of interesting in terms of that. Also, I thought it was, like, really cute how, like, Peridot was just type making Claude's repeatedly into, like, I'm assuming it was Twitter, because Stephen said only 140 characters, so I'm basically thinking he's referencing to Twitter. So that was really interesting in that episode. And then in Beach City Drift, I think the only thing I really wanted to talk about was the fact that, um, you know, Stephen and Connie, it was really cute to see them again. It also confirmed that Greg hadn't spent all his money. He still has some of it, enough to buy, like, a used car or whatever that he really wanted. And, you know, we got to see Stevani again. And it was really nice to, like, see them realise that they shouldn't fuse into Stevani, at least the now, anyway. Alfie again, squeaking the toy. They shouldn't fuse... Uh, for a negative reason like they want to keep Stavoni like a thing between them that's positive which I thought was really sweet although I know how like um childish that sounds considering that homeworld is like keen to destroy the planet and for all we know maybe Stavoni is the only fusion that Stephen <coughs> Alfie again with the squeaky toy that maybe Stavoni is the only fusion Stephen is going to be able to do because we don't know yet whether Stephen is capable of even fusing with any actual gem so far we just know he can fuse with a human so I don't know how that's going to work. But also it was kind of sweet to see like Stavani wearing Connie's like oversized bomber jacket. That was pretty cute. And it was nice to see that, um, you know, they realized that they shouldn't fuse because they're angry or something like that. They should fuse because, you know, they want to do something good or they're happy being with each other and something sweet like that. So I, that was really nice. And, you know, that was a good way to round off the week. So for the first week of Steve, Stephen... Uh, Summer of Stephen is what I'm trying to say. I'm being distracted by Alfie squeaking his toy in the background there. Alfie, stop it. <laughs> like, 
he's just squeaking the toy. It's just like breaking my train of thought. I couldn't even record this any other way because he was crying so much, but um, I really wanted to get this video out. So next week, I don't know what the running order is. I just know there's one episode next week, which will be probably a really big episode and what everyone's probably looking forward to, which is called Monster Reunion. And by the look of the sneak peek, by the way, spoilers again, if you've not seen the sneak peek for that episode, you might want to end the video now before you see any spoilers, but um, that episode apparently Centipedal, the monster that, you know, Stephen tried to save and whatnot, apparently they're going to come back and he's going to be able to reform them, like uncorrupt them and stuff. So I think it'll be interesting to finally find out what Centipedal actually looks like as a, as a gem and, you know, whether they were a crystal gem or whether they were like from Homeworld or something like that because Centipedal is green. And um, other than Peridot, we don't have any other green gems, so that would be pretty interesting. So until next week, guys, I will see you all later.